Hey everyone, so in this video I want to show you how you can configure a debugger inside of NeoVim. We'll be using obviously the most uh, common plugins for this, so NVimDAP, NVimDAP UI. I'll also be using NVimDAP uh, virtual text, which adds a virtual text next to the different variables you're trying to kind of go through. And I'm going to be configuring it specifically for Golang, which is really my preferred language of choice here. And to start, actually, let's define what debugging is. So debugging is really just the practice of trying to find bugs in your code. And when you use a debugger, it's just essentially a way for you to stop the execution of the code. You put essentially a breakpoint, you stop the execution of code, and it allows you to kind of go through it line by line. Um, and so you can inspect things like variables and stack and things like that. Sometimes in um, other kind of scenarios, you end up using like print, in whatever language and you try to see what the variable is as the whole program runs in this case it stops the program that allows you to go through it line by line so you step in or you step out a certain line or a function um, okay so to get started as i said we're going to use nvimdap and i'm not going to walk you through every single line of the configuration it probably will waste your time but i'm going to show you my configuration tell you what it does and tell you how you can you know, use it and then we can do a small demo of how this works all right, let's get to it. Also, if you just want to get the configuration, um, mine is based on the Kickstart NVim. I think this is a pretty solid one uh, by TJ, super clean. You can just use this configuration and you pretty much have DAP ready to use. I'll leave a link to all of these things in the description. So here's my configuration. Um, if we go to my NVim, so I pretty much just have a DAP.lua inside of my plugins. And then this is just my configuration. I will be using the mouse to scroll because you guys need to see what I'm pointing at. So I got the NVIM DAP as my kind of plugin and then dependencies, you need the UI. Um, this one is kind of needed for the UI. You also got the NVIM DAP Go. And usually there's like similar naming conventions to different um, debuggers or language specific debuggers. In this case, we're gonna use NVIM DAP Go. And then this one here, which is NVIM DAP virtual text, it's gonna add the virtual text. Also, if you're using Mason, you should probably just add these two lines here so you can install your uh, debuggers. So with Go, you have like Delve, and I have it installed using Homebrew. Next, you'll need to kind of set up your key maps. So in my case, it's very similar to what the Kickstart one has, like all these things. But the only difference is that I have like special keys, essentially different keys. So leader D, capital D, C, leader D, S, I, etc. So you got like continue, which will start your debugger or stop it essentially. You got to step into something or step over a function or uh, the line, step out of it. You can add breakpoints and then this one essentially a breakpoint with some conditions. You can toggle the UI and then you can uh, run the last configuration essentially. Now for the configuration, you first need to require both the DAP and the DAP UI. Next, you need to set up your DAP UI. This is still very similar to what TJ did in the Kickstart one, bunch of icons. These three lines will automatically open up your UI whenever you start debugging. Now, this is all you need to do to set up your virtual text. Just require it and uh, do setup. There's more configuration that you can see in the docs, but this is just enough. And then for the DAP Go, that's all you need to do. Essentially, you say delve, and then because I installed it using like uh, Homebrew and not like Mason, all I had to do is just set up the path. So if you see here, for example, I can say um, um, which DLV, and you can see that it's installed using Homebrew. And all I had to do is just essentially say, find that here. And according to TJ, if you go all the way down here, if uh, you're on Windows, there's like a special thing to do here. And, you know, I'll leave that to you. But essentially for me, all I had to do is just say delve and then um, set up the path for my debugger. So that's really all you have to do here. And with this, you're pretty much ready to go and ready to start debugging your code. All right, so let's try with a Go project. Let's go to this simple project that I have here. And this is just a one file, essentially, Go code, right? It's just the main function. And what are you seeing here? It's like an add function in it, all right? So Let's say I want to see what's up with this sum A plus B. I want to kind of inspect this. I want to run a debugger on it. So the first thing you need to do is set a breakpoint, which will break the kind of the flow of running this program on this specific line. 
and all you have to do is just for me for example just toggle it here and you can see here we, there's this like b here it just shows me that there's a breakpoint now if i want to run this i can go here and say the continue one so for me it's like uh, leader capital d and then c and because we are running a single file in this case i can just say um, debug and as you can see it just starts it there's a lot to see here so first thing we got this local which shows you like the variables inside of this local scope we got the scope itself we got um, these things here um, it's like the runtime information this is where the kind of the terminal console you see the logs in here and etc there's a stack in here as well in this case you don't have any now notice we have some icons here and if you remember from my configuration we added these icons here so these can be changed obviously in this case uh, this is what you're seeing here now you can stop over it as i said so let's say we have leader d and then s and then i can do o for example this steps over this line okay and now you see here the virtual text this 15 here is coming from that virtual text i i find this really useful i think it's like easy to see things that way you can also see it here by the way but this is like really nice that way as well and yeah so the idea is just you can also use the icons here so i can do one more like that and just step over the code and that's really the whole basics of debugging you put a breakpoint or more and then you run the code or run your program and you try to step over it one by one like one line at a time or step over a function for example and so on and so forth um this allows you to inspect like the details of what's happening and you know why you have a problem maybe or a bug or whatever so that's one way to simply run this right and you know this is useful for like one single file like this but usually in most cases you end up doing this in like a bigger project you have a bunch of tests and you know you want to run your test against your code against your code and then you want to see what the problem with the code right so let's try that let's stop this and let me go to another code base here so here we see we have like a calculator essentially and let me show you how this works first so go run dot essentially it's a very basic calculator i used ai for this i didn't really create it so if i say add five and then five it should give me 10 but this one is giving me 11 so we have a problem with this code right so if i run my tests here and say go test um, dot uh first we need to exit if i do go test dot notice that the test add is failing because it's expecting like you know, 5 plus 3 equal to um, 8 but it's getting 9 so we can tell that there's a problem and most likely you can tell it as well quickly we're just adding one to this so let's go to our code go to our calculator and this is our add function and i already have a line here to tell you that this is the bug if you can't see it and so you can see that we have plus one here and that's really the issue but saying it's a more complicated problem and we need to kind of figure out how to get there right so we can tell the ad is failing and this is the result this is just adding to a history this is what the ai gave me i don't care about this line but you really care about this one and what you're returning so this is really the problem here so let's add a debugger here and we can start with the breakpoint i can go to my tests and then i can go to my ad test here just to show you what's happening yeah, so it's just a bunch of tests here, table tests, so you can see like all these options. And now we need to run a debugger. So if I do this and then press C, now we're kind of running the tests and then um, kind of a debugger through the test, right? So I have to use this debug test. And so when I run it, it stops where we put the breakpoint here and notice that you know it shows me five and three and this is correct because we did pass five and three as a first kind of iteration of this test but if we go through it it's giving us nine and so if we look at this code now and we look at what's happening in here we can quickly tell like oh, okay a and b is you know five and three which is correct but the result is nine and so you can look at this one and see okay this is the problem we get this plus one here and now you can identify this remove it or fix it and move on and so, yeah, that's how you pretty much do it. So now once you use the debugger to identify the problem, you can get back to your code, go back here, remove this thing from here, 
and then essentially run your tests again and you can tell that this thing is working. So that's really the basics of debugging. And you can do I mean, other stuff with it. So for example, if I open up this again, and let me show you this quickly. Um, you can do D and then C. And there's a bunch of options here. So let me explain what this means. So the first one, the debug, which is this guy in here. So this is useful if you're running like on a single file, right? Like just a main.go. Um, you can use the same one if you have arguments. So for example, let's say you have a specific port or whatever. And this one, if you have arguments and um, a flag to pass. Now the debug package, uh, essentially it's like you're running a debugger against the whole package. And finally attach, which I rarely use, honestly, it's a, it's a way to connect to already existing Go process. You can run a debugger against a running process. Then you got this debug test, which is uh, you're essentially running a debugger uh, on a test in the, in, in, the, in the package you're in. And finally, this one will be in the entire module, essentially. So there's a bunch of options. In most cases, I find myself using a debug package. So in most cases, I find myself using debug package in this one and debug test. These are the, for me, at least the most used ones. Um, you can customize this as well. Like you can add custom ones if you want to, but in most cases, these should be enough. And yeah, so to get back here, you can see that the configuration is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to do here. I think when it comes to like JavaScript, there are some VS Code related things that you need to install, but for Go, and I think for like things like Rust, most likely, uh, the configuration is gonna be straightforward. So yeah, there you have it. It's pretty straightforward. I know a lot of people struggle with this thing, but it's really straightforward. There's not a lot of things to do here. One thing I would spend some time thinking about is like those um, key maps, Mine are not user friendly. I just try to keep it like, um, or basically not make a conflict with other key maps. But I know like TJ, for example, is using like F1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. That works. I don't have that on my keyboard. So I need to come up with better naming or better key maps. But so far, this workflow is perfect for what I do. And the configuration is super easy as well. I wouldn't try to put like, uh, you know, try to support so many languages as a start. Just use the ones that you have or you, you, you're kind of developing with. Um, it gets messy. But if you, let's say, use Go and let's say TypeScript, just try to add debuggers for those two things first. So yeah, there you have it. That's everything I wanted to share in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.